So I told the ladies a bit about you and our history from national team and some of the some extra training sessions and stuff like that and a little bit about your journey and how hard you had to work to get where you are. Um, yeah. And I watched a little bit of your digging course the first day. They're going to have access to that and the setting course and all the other stuff. Um, but yeah, today we're going to talk about resiliency and then answer any of the questions that the ladies have. Uh, Dusty, I'm sending you right now a some questions that they submitted. Okay, I'm gonna send it on WhatsApp. Cool. So once we get past uh, whatever introduction you have, you can hit that up if you want and then ask them questions at the end. So take it away. Cool. Cool, yeah, so um, <clears throat> putting a little IG. So yeah, my name is uh, Dustin Wan, uh, member of Team USA. I think now, maybe not, <laughs> I think I'm done with that, but um, yeah, I've, I've been around going in my 12th year in Poland, uh, which is crazy to think about because I mean, it felt like just the other day, Ryan was helping me write my first contract to play in Finland for, um, it was around like 1200 euros a month. I was making more coaching club <laughs> as an assistant coach in America than my first contract. Uh, but yeah, my story is just one of, uh, I think a little luck combined with uh just being stubborn my mom always says i'm stubborn like my grandma uh but that's what i'm going to talk about because i think a lot of success uh, in sports and athletics and in life has to do with being not just stubborn but i think resilient right because we always have these personal preferences to how things should work it could be something as simple as i want to make the team i want to be a starter I don't want to be pulled out from this set because my friends are watching. I want my boyfriend or my girlfriend to like me back. These are personal preferences. And with the, within these preferences, we don't have complete control, right? A coach decides whether you play or not. The coach decides whether he subs you out. Um, you don't even have complete control while you play in a game because there's another six players on the other side, five on your side. You can't control who your setter is. And a lot of times these personal preferences don't pan out. And so what I've seen uh, throughout my career for myself, as long as my team is the national team and professionally too, is there's a very wide <laughs> expansion of how people react to when things don't work out. Do they get frustrated? Do they get sad? Do they get angry? Do they get resentful? Do they get creative? Do they find solutions? Do they get back in the gym? And also, it's like, how long do they stay resentful? For me, I can get resentful or angry, but it doesn't last that long, right? Because I need to get back to work. Maybe some people at first, when it doesn't work out, they get back in the gym. But what happens if it continues to not work out? Do they keep on getting back to the gym over and over and over and over? Or do they eventually quit? Um, Ryan, like myself, um, we didn't see a lot of success initially with, uh, within the USA gym, but uh, the effort and the decisions that were up to us, I think always led back to a solution mindset where it's like, all right, I'm not making the team, but I'm going to get back in the gym early. I'm not playing in drill. I'm going to stay after and continue getting work. So I really like this topic. I would speak with a friend, uh, maybe, you know, Matt, Matt Anderson. Uh, opposite for Team USA, and we were speaking a little bit about his journey um, playing in Russia and just about his career. We're just kind of reflecting because uh, we're, we're a little older now, but uh, we had a moment to reflect over this past week in Italy about our careers, and it was the same thing. We were talking about a mutual friend, and just uh, it's just resiliency. You know, what do you do when things don't work out? What do you do when things don't work out for a month or two months, maybe for two years, because um, at least for Americans, a lot of Americans just quit, right? It's like, you know what? I miss my family too much. I miss my friends too much. I don't deserve this. This isn't right. But you know what? I think those are just easy scapegoats and to, to not committing ourselves to our highest version when things don't work out. So 
I'm going to share a couple things. Um, like I said, Dustin won. I've been on Team USA for, um, I think, 12 years. Uh, the first five years on Team USA, I, I really wasn't with the team. I was working with the B team. And uh, for three years, um, talking about personal preferences, uh, for the first three years, I was with the B team. And there was just really no shot to make it and to train with the, the top team. There's already two liberos that were more established than I. Uh, but going to my fourth year, we got a new coach. And uh, I was so excited, so excited. It was a really good coach. And uh, it seemed like it was going to be this new shift, right? All the young guys from the B team were going to move up to the A team. And I was going to be one of those, right? Uh, our team had just won the, the Pan Am Cup, which is the big tournament for the B team. I got best defensive player. I was coming back from my team in France B. I got best libero. I'm so excited. New coaching staff, new era, new opportunity for me to make the first team. So I got into practice. Um, and uh, before I got into practice, I spoke with the coach. How was the season? Great. I got best libero. Went so well. Oh, it's good, 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 good to have you back. Okay. Go to practice. And uh, my name wasn't on the board. Um, I didn't practice at all. I was like, okay, it's kind of odd, but it's my first day back. And then after practice, I got the, I got the, hey, can I, can I have a minute? And I'm so uh, oblivious. I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, what is it? A uh, little did I know that's kind of like the, hey, you're, you're cut. And so I um, went up to him and he's like, yeah, we have three liberals this year. You're not one of them. You know, thank you. And panic, right? I was so panicked, so panicked, so panicked. Like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It's like, I can't be cut from this team. Like, this is who I am. Like, I'm a pro volo player. I'm part of USA. What will I do this summer? So I kind of panicked and I was like, can I just, can I just stay? You know, can I just pepper? Can I just help out? I'll just shag ball. And the coach could tell he kind of had something to do, somewhere to be. And he's just like, yeah, sure. Like, you want to be like a volunteer coach? Like, sure, you can stay. And so that summer and the next summer as well, I was going into my, my third and fourth summer of USA Volleyball. I, I like degraded myself where I was just like a, a volunteer coach. And it was kind of a thin balance of like uh, really believing in myself and just and this thought like I just need time, but also the scarcity where it's like, I'm just too afraid to not be relegated from the national team. And so once again, I had this personal preference of like, this is my shot. I'm going to make the world league roster. I'm going to train and it didn't pan out. And uh, instead of panicking, instead of getting angry, instead of being resentful, you know, I, I just made the most of it. I didn't get any reps in that summer, not really the next summer either, but you know, I would show up before practice. I'd be the fastest person to wipe up sweat. I'd be the person to stay after, be grateful to being with those guys to try and learn as much as I could when a coach was talking to a libero and just realizing that, you know what, things weren't how I'd hoped they would be, but I'm going to make the best of where I am. And that comes back to with my effort, my preparation and my commitment to any opportunity that was made available for me. And this theme really hasn't passed me throughout my journey. Um, you know, arrogantly, I'd like to think like, you know, eventually I made it right. Oh, I finally made it like enough years on national team, you know, winning world cup with the national team, starting winning the bronze medal world league. I made it, but uh, there just never is that. And I'm so grateful. I've come to that realization because then we get to invest in ourselves. I was speaking the other day with uh, Facundo Conte from Argentina. Amazing outside, maybe one of the best in the world. And he was saying the same thing in Poland. He just felt he was good enough, right? I'm, I'm good. I played in Italy. I played the national team. I'm good enough. And then he was finally working with a coach who helped him realize that you're, you're good. Maybe you are good enough, but you can always be greater. So he had this realization being at the very top. But for me, I've had to make this realization, I think, more or less when my butt is on the ground and I don't know what to do next. So um, I want to leave most of this conversation 
up for questions. Um, I'm going to keep on going back and I'll, I'll get on some rants. I have a communication major from Long Beach State, so I can talk all day. But uh, I want to make this um, as much as I can open to questions so I can be as specific as possible in your journey. But overall, I want to talk a lot about um, our ability to be resilient, right? That choice, our effort, the decisions that we make are completely in our control. Us starting on the team, making a team, getting a big contract, playing well, these things aren't completely in our control. And when we rely too much on these things panning out, we become much more vulnerable to suffering, to resentment, to not having a great relationship with volleyball, and then eventually quitting. And so the big message today too is what's completely in our control. And that comes down to our preparation, our effort, our action, our ability to be a great teammate, and our ability to surrender even to those decisions that we don't like because we don't have complete control over it. So I want to open it up, Ryan or anyone else have some questions. I'll go on some rants and then uh, yeah, I want to be as specific as possible to where you are in your journey and how I can best help. So really grateful to be here and excited to help anyway I can. Ladies, anything? If not, then I'll just ask questions from this thing, but this is a big chance for you to step up to the plate. Ryan, we send <laughs> these questions on the forums. Yeah, I'm so aware. I'm aware, Swiss person. Should, should we just <laughs> So should we just ask you can right now, if you or? would like to? Yeah, you can if live if you'd okay. like to. Yeah. Okay, sure. So um, my first question would be um, on this process that you've been going through this whole way. Um, you were talking about like um, you got your like um, the first three years you did, you just made you did, like you just you made the B team, and then you got even cut off the roster and. But it sounds like you were always like confident in yourself and you were always like, okay, someday I'm going to make that someday I'm going to be on the on the A team. But was there yeah. ever a moment when you felt like um, you would completely lost confidence in yourself and you would be just like, oh my God, I'm just gonna, no, I'm not, go I'm not going to be good enough. And what, if there was this moment, what did you do to regain your confidence? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even recently when I was in Italy, you know, I thought um, we had the VNL and I, I thought I'd play a little bit more than, than I was. I think in the first like 11 games, I played one game and, uh, you know, just a, a little bitter, a little resentful. And I understood that, you know, I wasn't going to go to the Olympics, but I'd hope I would be in a position to help uh, push the team, push the starting libero and to be able and to compete. Because as I mentioned, I've, I've had a long career and especially playing in some of the best leagues in the world. And I think there's like a, a little ego attachment that I should play. Like, why am I not playing? I'm good. And so uh, there was some time where I was really struggling over these past couple of weeks. Uh, why am I not playing? I don't understand like there's situations where I know I can help the team. I know I can push players. I can bring something different. And I think for me, it's just having the power to observe those thoughts, right? These, these thoughts aren't us, right? For a lot of you players that have been in games, you have these debilitating thoughts, right? Like oh, I'm blowing it. I can't pass. I'm not killing any balls. I can't make a serve, right? These thoughts aren't us. What are these thoughts? We don't know, but it's really good and almost important to detach ourselves from it and just observe them. And so for me, it's really important to be able to observe them and to observe them. I need to train myself with mindfulness meditation. And what I mean by that is just ability to observe the thought, the, the breath coming in and out of my nose, right? Being very specific with my consciousness. So 
in regards to the thoughts, these debilitating thoughts, I can also observe, observe them and know that, you know, maybe it's nothing personal, knowing that resentment doesn't help me, maybe that this anger isn't beneficial for the team. And just coming back to the thing that I can control, and that is just being a good teammate, staying prepared, and knowing that I'll get an opportunity because pretty much we'll always have an opportunity. Might not be in a game, probably going to be in training, but you'll always have an opportunity. And then, uh, yeah, the last match I was there for, uh, we played against Netherlands and I got subbed in. We are in the third set, we were down and I was able to come in and help us win in five. And so um, I should have known because I was starting to feel more resentful than present or mindful. But it's just this thought where wherever we are in that frustration, we need to come back to the breath begin again and realize what is completely in our control because just playing good training good that's not completely in our control we can't just push a button and say i'm going to play good i'm going to play great i'm going to come into the game and be great can't say that because there's so many different players you can't push a button and say i'm going to start because there's more players to choose from there's a coach that makes a decision it's more so the mindset we wake, wake up with the gratitude we wake up with, where we choose to live with, and then the actions for that day, right? I'm not playing, I'm frustrated, I'm not playing good, but you know what? Let's be intentional today. Let's wake up early. Let's meditate. Let's journal. Let's find the things that we are grateful about rather than focusing on the things that we don't have in life. I think it's really powerful to crave those things that are already in our life. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of athletes here that have already achieved a lot, right? But once you achieve these things that you previously were so excited to achieve, it just becomes a new normal. Oh, like I'm a pro, like, oh, now it's not a big deal. But before it was like, oh, I'll do anything to be a pro. I'll do anything, 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 anything. And then you become a pro and you adapt to this, right? And you're just like, I'm a pro, like now I should be on a better team, right? So I think it's important to find those things in our life that we already have to crave, find that gratitude. And now we have a higher foundation to move forward with. And with that, we can align our decisions, but what we feel we need to do, right? If I'm not playing, if I'm not getting playing time, it's like, what can I If staying up late and looking at the phone, I'm getting into a good evening. And so the next day when I wake up, I have as much energy as possible right. to I'm get playing. to work. I'm getting playing time. So like, what can I do better? Like, go cool. rather than blaming someone or finding an escape. Sorry, I have some feedback. And so let's get in early. Let's get in early and have an and uh, Sorry, I have some feedback. Let's work but, on um, the big thing is it's Stretching. whenever you're in that funk, you just go back within and figure out those things that are completely in our control. And then we begin again and again and again and again, rather than finding resentment in a coach or in a player, because with that resentment, it just poisons us slowly. Great question. Um, I think Ryan just sent me a question may I, list. May I jump in? Go, yeah, please. Um, so to jump in regarding what you were saying about the starting libero and how you were uh, subbed in against the Netherlands and all your behavior uh, before making the roster on the A team of Team USA, um, yeah. you were pointing out that like you were doing it for the team as well to push it like for the better. And my question is like, so you've been in a situation, in a position where you had to compete with someone else for the same position. And like, how did you tackle that situation so that it would like be beneficial for the team instead of like ending up in a war between two egos of like players playing the same position and competing for one spot. So like, how did you manage such situations in your career to help the team and like, smooth the whole process of this competition that should help the team be better overall. 
I don't know if it's clear enough. Let me know if it's not clear yeah. and I can reformulate. Yeah, there's this, uh, I think it's this Buddhist word called mudita, and it's this thought that life isn't a zero sum game. Like, for example, if the libero starts, well, he wins and I loses. If I start, I win and he loses. Where we can also be happy for others and share the joy in their success. And I think this is so important in life. And in sport, it's very difficult. It's so, so, so difficult because we feel that it is a zero sum game. Oh, I didn't play. You know, I played and he didn't. So I won today. And so I think um, I was very lucky because when I started playing at a little higher level in college, um, I went to like my hometown school and I was just so bought in in the team. And I always had this thought that either I play because I'm great and I deserve it or the other libero plays and he plays because he is the best libero in the nation. That's how good I am. There's no other reason, right? He's playing because he's the best libero in the nation because I'm pushing him so hard. And so I think uh, you have to have this attitude where you have to make it clear, not just to yourself, but to everyone that you're the starter. Because we'll always have a friend that will be like, oh, but you should be playing because you're a better defender. Oh, you should be playing because of this, this, that. And uh, even though that friend wants to help you and make you feel good, to, to not lend our ears to people looking to, to give you pity or to make you feel good. And so I like to make sure that I'm doing everything I know to be the best person, not just on the team, but in the league, maybe in the world. And to never really complain unless I feel like it's completely clear. And even at that, it's still kind of an ego trap, right? Because now you're just saying things to make yourself feel better. And so uh, it's really difficult, even in my professional teams, you know, usually the second libero is pushing me. The last two years, they've played some defense too. And I'll get frustrated in the moment, but then, if I'm on the bench, I'll have some time to think about it. And it's just like the coach made the decision. Being resentful, being pouty, isn't going to change that decision. It's not who I want to be. And I have to know too deep down that that other libero has worked really hard to get this opportunity and I need to support him. And if I'm really frustrated and I'm really bitter and angry, well, I'm going to get into practice early you know, every single day that next week. And so it can push me to be even better. And how grateful am I to have another libero pushing me to be even better? The team I'm going to go to next year, they, they signed a, a really good second libero. And I thought about it. I was like, why, why they signed such a good libero? And then I thought about it. I was like, well, you know what? Great. I'm going to be that much better because he's going to push me every single day to get on the court. And because of that, I'm going to be so much more intentional. I'm going to get to practice early. I'm going to stay after practice because uh, I want to play. Every athlete wants to play. I don't think if you're a real athlete, just being on the team is good enough. We all have that drive. And so when we have that competitor, we should look at them as an ally and be like, thank you. Thank you for pushing me to be an even better version than possible. Because if we're just the only player on the team, we're, we're probably going to do the least amount, right? It's just natural. Humans are creatures of least effort but when we have someone else pushing you or if you're pushing someone else it's just consistently reflecting how can I be better how can I be more intentional what can I cut out from my life because we can always cut out things as well and so keep on reflecting and knowing that it is a team right and if someone's ahead of you and they're good and you're not playing you can always be that much better or make the choice that much easier for the coach by your actions. And if someone's pushing at you, be grateful. Great, thank you. My career is much longer than this one year. And even if you play in front of me a couple more times, I'm gonna be that much better because I know you're pushing me and I'm gonna to have to push myself even more than I thought I would. Great questions. Thank you.
Do you want to check those out, buddy, on uh, WhatsApp? I mean, mm -hmm. a lot to choose from, honestly. All right. Unless someone yep. has a live you got another question. Right yeah. Yeah, I have another one. Too. So mine is, um, what is something that you learned over your long career of volleyball that you wish you would have known when you started out in your rookie year that would have helped you start out a little smoother or just in a better position? Mm. I think it's just the power of each day. Uh, when I was first in Finland, uh, I was like, I just, I wanted to play volleyball. I loved working out. I loved training, but I also played a lot of video games. I also really liked to party in the weekend and there's just so much power from each day. And, uh, I don't know how many of you have read some of the stuff I write, um, about the list and about being intentional and checking off little, um, uh, micro habits each day but it's just really powerful. It's really powerful when you're consistent over a large period of time. Um, and I notice it when I'm overseas for eight months and I come back and just how people talk to me, how people, uh, for example, tell me about their problems and stuff like that. Um, for this one instance, just being in Poland and meditating each day for around an hour and people just feel a, a much wider space space and trust for them to be open and so it's like I come back and I'm just like oh wow well, like this is a lot <laughs> but it's just like being so consistent I don't really see that growth but people who haven't seen me for eight months they recognize it right and so um, I think people myself included we just get so caught up at the end of the week of the result where it's like this false dichotomy it's like I won so I'm a winner I lose I'm a loser and just how quickly can we refocus and get away from that uh, false dichotomy of I'm a loser and I suck and I blew it and the team hates me, the coach hates me. I'm not going to get a job next year. How quickly can we pivot that feeling to great, like got the information I needed, like got to work on float serves. Great. Like didn't go well, but you know what? I'm going to spend some extra time working on high balls. I'm going to work on my back sets, like and finding the failure and using it as our teacher. And every day we can be very consistent, we can be very intentional. And as a pro, it gets difficult, right? The first two months you're like, great, great to be here. Like great group of girls, great group of guys. Oh, so exciting, da, 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 da. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth month, it's like, team's not doing so well. Don't really like this team. Don't like the coach. I'm not playing like F this, F that, you know? And so this is the power of being intentional and consistent every single day and not holding resentment for the coach for the situation for the club i've been lucky where every year i've been paid i know a lot of players don't get paid and they take out that resentment on the team but also on them right it's like i'm not going to practice you know i'm not going to try hard i'm not going to win the games it's like you're only hurting yourself you can't do that uh, and so i think just the power of being intentional and consistent every single day and not getting too worried on the short-term results because if you believe in yourself you're just building every single day you're building you're building building and uh for for those efforts and for those tasks to compact it's it's going to end up big in the long run so just don't estimate the power of every single day i have another question um, was that like a specific moment or a game that just like switched your mindset to just like, oh, I have to learn like how to control the stuff. I have to learn how to not like have any like resilience towards the coaches and just like everything they just talked about. Was there like a specific moment that helped you realize that or how did you even like started getting into that like so yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of moments as it's like, uh, I feel like every year I just like, con like, I don't know how to say this without being arrogant or it's like, I continue to evolve to like another level. Right. 
And so I remember the first time this happened was my second year in Finland. My first year in Finland, everything went really well. Team played good. I got libero the year. Second year, I didn't necessarily want to go back, right? I was like, goodbye, everyone. Like, one year was good enough. I'm going to go somewhere else. I didn't get any contracts. So I had to go back to Finland kind of with my tail in between my legs, like, because uh, I told everyone I was leaving. Go back to Finland, had uh, some awful expectations, just assuming that we'd be better team would do better then I would leave. Again, this is not completely in my control how the team plays. And so um, that year was really tough because we weren't playing good as a team. And so I started pushing more. I started being really aggressive to the point where I was almost out of control. And there was one game where uh, I just played awful. And I was with my girlfriend at the time. We went outside and I was like throwing fruit like as hard as I could into the snow because I was just so pent up and so frustrated. And after that, I was like, all right, something has to change. Like this lifestyle I live where, you know, I come to practice, I work hard, lift hard, but I also play a lot of video games. I also party a lot. I was like, something has to change. I need to like start learning about my mindset. And then I, I called my mom or emailed her. And I, at that time, I didn't like reading. And so I did the scariest thing possible. And I told her to send me a bunch of books on mindset. And uh, from there, I just started to change the way um, uh, I worked throughout the day, right? Because as a pro, like most people, when they go to practice, they work hard. Some pros work really hard. And there's a lot of people do that throughout the world. And you know what? I was 25. I was in one of the worst leagues in the world. And I was like, you know what? Like, I have to start working differently. I need to be more intentional. I need to be more purposeful. And not just on the court, off the court. So from there, I started reading about mindset, about mindfulness, and that morphed into the next year reading about nutrition, that morphed into meditation, that morphed into philosophy and stoicism, that morphed into really committing to the list, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. And so um, I like to really think about failures or this darkness as just like, great opportunities for us to change the path that we're on and just realize be like hey you know what it's not working what i'm doing isn't good enough and to not be so hard on ourselves right be like okay it's not good enough we can change it we can read more we can find a mentor we can work on mindfulness we can work on meditation we can spend more time in the gym we can get a deeper relationship with our assistant coach or our head coach and get more reps. There's always ways to change it rather than just sitting in the darkness, sitting in the mud and saying, this sucks. That's not fair. Why don't I play? No, we always have the possibility to change. And usually that change needs to start within first. So um, I would say that first realization was in Finland. And that just kind of set me up to this path of self-discovery that started from reading uh, mindset books first. So, great question. I have a question as well. Um, what systems do you have in place that help you stay organized and intentional? Yep, so it's, uh, I have this thing called the list. Recently, I haven't been using it so much just because I have uh, so many other things I have to do. Uh, that just takes a bulk amount of my time. But this list really helped me when I didn't necessarily have a business and I just had a bunch of free time throughout the day, right? And so how the list works is uh, I have it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. And each day has a list of small tasks. Um, could be meditation, uh, journaling, not eating processed food, getting extra reps, meditating at night, stretching before I go to bed, some examples, right? So first thing I do, I wake up, I meditate and I go and I cross off meditation. After that, I journal, I go to my list, I cross off journaling. And throughout the week, I accomplish those tasks to hold myself accountable. And when I do, I cross them off. And at the end of the week, I'll put it on my wall for me to see. Because overall, as an athlete, I wanna be an athlete that's intentional, always improving, always getting better and committing to the work I know needs to be done so I can be better. So if I look at my wall and I see 80% of the things aren't highlighted, 
Well, that's like my mirror, right? I'm not being who I say I want to be. And that's so important to hold yourself accountable. So that's my way of holding myself accountable with a list and uh, materializing the things that I believe are necessary for me to develop as a person on and off the court. And by highlighting them and putting it on my wall, I hold myself to that standard. And if I'm not working up to the standard, well, that's on me. And if I'm crushing everything and the results are panning out, well, I can recess it. I can add some things, you know, maybe I'll get in some more reps, not only before, but after practice, I can get more sleep. I can cut less time off of social media. And so I like using the list kind of as um, a compass to growing and becoming my best version. So you can guys can read more about that on my website. I wrote three different articles on that in the kind of subcategories I use uh, with regards to the list. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Cool, I have cool. Questions. After all these years, uh, what do you say was the hardest part of being a pro? Sorry, can you say a question again? Yeah, uh, after all this year, what did you say? What's the hardest part of being a pro volleyball player? Uh, I think the hardest part of being a pro volleyball player is just your perception, right? It's very easy to focus on what you don't have. I don't have family. I don't have, most of the time you don't have a relationship. I don't have a community. I'm not home. Uh, I was talking to a, an amazing American volleyball player this year, and he was saying that he had lost eight months of his life. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I missed birthdays. I missed weddings. I missed my nephews being born. Excuse me. And it's like, yeah, you can focus on that, or you can focus on the eight months you just spent playing in one of the best leagues in the world by yourself, dealing with all the difficulties that come from the coaches. And if you started meditating and reading more, you can talk about, you know, you can focus on these things that you brought, but it's just our perceptions, right? Where do we focus? And I think going back to the list, there's a lot of power of starting your day of journaling, starting your day of gratitude and realizing how much greatness you have in your life. You can also realize how much scarcity you have in your life. And so the biggest thing for me is, perception i know for ryan too it's like he never went overseas he wouldn't be living in europe you know he's like crushing it as a like a, as a nomad and he's met so many great people and instead of just having one family in chicago he has probably now hundreds of families throughout the world and through that it's so much love so much relationships and uh so much clarity i'm sure on how he wants to live his life like he lives in europe now you know, by living overseas, he has a different, different sets of priorities and values. But if you were just to always stay home, that's all he would know. And so again, it's just realizing like our perceptions and our perspective are up to us. We can focus on the scarcity. Team sucks. Team's not good. Coach doesn't play me. I don't have any friends here. I miss my girlfriend. I miss my boyfriend. Or it's like, wow, I'm learning so much about myself. This is really tough. And knowing that I'm in a tough situation, I'm in a situation that's really uncomfortable, I know I'm going to learn even more about myself and I'm going to be a stronger person because I'm here alone. So going back to that, it's just perceptions, 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 and making sure we have the correct perceptions and we don't give in to pity. Uh, I have another question. Um, yep. you uh, you were mentioning the stoicism before some minutes ago. Could you maybe come back to this? Like, um, what were some practices you learned with this uh, in this area, or what are you doing? Like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I kind of stumbled upon stoicism on a time where um, I was playing on a team that was one in nineteen in France, and uh, it was really difficult. I just won the World Cup with Team USA and my ego was like, I don't deserve this. This isn't right. I shouldn't be here. I'm way better than these players, et cetera, et cetera. I just kept on telling me these stories, 
being a victim of seeking pity with my friends. And of course my friends would agree with me, right? They want to tell me what I want to hear to make me feel better. Uh, but that wasn't necessarily the best thing for me. And so I came up about stoicism in that time and just kind of a light bulb went off in my head where it's just like, you know what? Like if I keep on focusing on my teammates and my coaches and how much I don't like them, how I don't agree with them, it's not going to help me. They're not going to change. I'm just going to keep on continuing to torture myself. But there are so many things where stoicism, where it's like, let's embrace what we have complete control over. And at that time I was using a list, but you know, maybe I do it like 40%, 30%, maybe after Tuesday, I hadn't done it a lot. And so I'm just like, I just won't do it for the week, you know? And so after reading, like, I think half of this stoic book called Meditations, I was like, wow, you know what? I'm going to commit to doing everything on my list for three weeks. And then I'll see, I'll see what, see what's going on from there. Because previously I told my agent, I was like, get me out of here. I don't care where I go. I'll be a second little bear on the team anywhere from this situation, right? I just wanted to escape it because again, it was uncomfortable. I was making excuses. I was finding pity and just creating this story where I can't thrive to be here. At least that was my ego's story. And so I did those three weeks, woke up. First thing I did, make the bed, go meditate, make a great breakfast. I would juice, have a nice coffee. Uh, I would go lift. I didn't have a car. So my coach had to drive me. Sometimes he wouldn't let me stay and do my full lift and conditioning. And so I would come back home and I'd go into the park. It was like freezing, but I would do my sprints. And I just wouldn't make any excuses for myself. I couldn't get any extra reps before because we had a team right before us and right after us. So what I would do, instead of making excuses, I would put my parka on in my house and I would warm up in my house. And so when I got to the gym, I could start getting those extra reps while my team was warming up. And so again, it was just, I was in this victim mindset and everything was against me, what was me. And then after kind of finding stoicism, I was like, wow, so many of these things are absolutely in my control. I'm just refusing to make the decision. And rather than making these decisions, in my favor, finding excuses. And so um, I really like stoicism and I love this thought of, uh, it's called the dichotomy of control. Uh, you can also find this in on my, my website where the stoics wanted to be completely clear in these two categories. There's things that are not completely in our control. For volleyball, this could be making a team, getting a big contract, playing in a great league, starting, and playing well, right? These things are not completely in our control. There's other factors, there's other people making decisions. We can't say with certainty, I'm gonna play in a great league. We can't say with certainty, I'm gonna play a great game. It doesn't matter how prepared, how fit, how ready you are, you can't say I'm gonna play a perfect game. But what can, you can say is I'm gonna be as prepared as possible. I'm gonna have the best mindset. I'm gonna have the best effort. I'm gonna be the best teammate. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be able to deal with the, those things outside of my control as best as possible. So when a coach sits you, you control how you react to that, right? You can go on the bench and you can like throw your paddle. I don't know if girls do that. Guys do that. They take the paddle and they throw it. They go to the bench and they pout or they go to the bench and they just clap, right? That's our decision. No one else has control over how we react to things we don't have complete control over so i love going back to the dichotomy of control because i just find that so empowering but once again if we don't want to we don't have to be a victim we can go within and realize how many opportunities are truly up to us to improve our game on and off the court so stoicism has been a big part and um i write about it a lot um on Instagram and then also on my website. So you can check out more there. But great question. I just want to jump in, Dusty. I think this is a, one of the reasons why I initially just thought like, man, this is a, this is a dude I need to spend a bit of time with. So for me, mm -hmm. 
training with you in the beginning was not just because you were in the gym, but it was because you were who you were. And that resonated with me. I could tell that your intentions were always pure. I could tell that you were struggling. You were also not as honest about the emotions at that point in your life, but like what the struggle <laughs> was for you, but I could tell. You know, I had been yeah. around the block. I knew what was going on. So for me, it was like I gravitated towards being, okay, if I'm going to get something from him, which is I have a person to serve an ace all the time. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to be ready to give him what I feel like. I, it's like I, it's resonating. It's, or you're emitting these vibes of, you know, I'm... I know I can work hard. I know I can stay consistent and persistent and resilient, but it ain't easy, you know? But yet here you were, this really, really great person who smiled through troubles, who uh, helped whenever possible. And your path from that first finished contract where you're like, hey, can you help me out and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you just gotta get your feet wet. Yeah to yeah. this story that you told, I remember talking with you about this season and being like, yeah, this is, this is one of those things you gotta go through because it's the true test of who you are and what you're willing to do to get to where you wanna be. And like, you're like literally 180 to say, let me lean into learning about the things I need to learn and start implementing all these things I know I should do and or I found out recently or am finding out I should do. And the moral of like this whole control idea for me is that, you know, the struggle as an agent is that we will very often get blamed for players not getting the contracts that they want and blah, blah, blah. But we had, I had great conversations with some of these coaches who are at this combine. And it's like, we as players need to understand when we do it, it comes. It's not the other way around. It doesn't come to you before you do it. And so like we have to put in that effort and then we have to have those results in order to earn those things. And so this world and the way things are moving and I think all these young people and even us, we need to be very aware of when the ego gets in the way, right? And to say, okay, is this the reality? Is this something that I actually could control or is this completely out of my control? You can't control which teams are gonna be interested in you once you have those results and those performances and that effort, but you can control those things that you put out, right? And who you decide to maybe uh, lash out at because you have not gotten where you want to be. And I think that's like one of the things with this combine that we're trying to accomplish. And I know I told you a bit about the combine, you're really excited about it, is that we want players to understand that there's a way to earn all of these things, but it's through struggle and being tired and keeping on going, even when it's hard. So I really like the things that you said, or I love the things you said about control, but I also wanted to give some people a little bit of insight into your background and that like you've always been you. It's just that you keep improving on it and you've made some very important decisions to lean into doing the things that you have to do, which it took me forever, bro, to do the same thing. I'd be like, I know I need to meditate because it's just like, yeah. duh, it's, it's like all of these things. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's funny, I almost like kind of brag about this now, even though in, in the past present moment, it wasn't so fun. But I mean, I was like a six year uh, overnight success success story. Like I was at the national team for five and a half years before I made my first like a team. Uh, my first year out of college, I didn't get a pro contract. I went to Finland. I had to go back to Finland. I went to France B my fifth year. I got a break to go to Brazil, but that was only because the team I signed with threw me out. They were like, nah, we don't want you anymore. We want this Bulgarian libero. And I'm like, what? And so before I went to Brazil, I thought my career was over. I was like, 
I, I just that year I got cut with the national team. Then the team I signed with was like, no, we don't want you. And it's just like, despite my best efforts, like nothing was really panning out. But, and again, it was like one part, I believe in myself, one part, I'm just too afraid to quit. But it was just intentional, consistent, intentional, consistent. Without necessarily this thought of like, there needs to be a good outcome for me to continue. It was just process, 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 process. And now it's like, I'm going to my fifth year in the Plus Liga, where there's been three years where I've been the only foreign libero in that league. And I think about that, and I'm just like, wow. Uh, it's, it's crazy. But it's just, if you believe in yourself, you can do it. But how consistent are you going to be? What are you going to sacrifice? And what are you going to do when things don't work out consistently? Because as athletes, is Poland, by the way, I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. Because as athletes, we we get a lot of feedback, whether it's conscious or not, of being winners, right? Our parents, like, you know, when we're younger, if you win, they're like, yeah, you won. And it feels good, right? And when you lose, it's like, ah, oh, you lost. And like, there's something inside of you. It's like, oh, like, I, I didn't get the, yeah, right? And so we do focus on the outcome and after enough times when the outcomes don't manifest we start to withdraw and maybe we quit because there is a certain feeling of love and wholeness when the outcomes go our way and when they don't go our way there's a certain amount of i'm a failure i'm not good enough people don't like me so i think that's the true test where it's how consistent and intentional can you be when things don't work out? That year when we went three and 23, it was really tough, but I built the foundation of like the things I have complete control over. Team really didn't win. After I made that decision, we won two more games. We ended up being three and 23. But man, those, won, those wins felt so good. And then the next year I ended up being in Poland where the situation, the environment was perfect. And I had, that foundation done. And so I set myself up great for that previous year to be in one of the best leagues in the world and to play pretty well because I went through that really difficult year where I had to build enormously purposeful routines. And so the big takeaway, it's we have these personal preferences. I want to be in this league. I want to make this amount of money. Maybe even I want to play with another friend. I want to be close to my boyfriend, to my girlfriend. And sometimes these things don't work out. Most of the time, these things don't work out. So the real question is at the end of the day, what are we going to do when they don't work out? Are we going to gossip? Are we going to find a scapegoat? Are we going to blame our agent? Or are we going to be more intentional? Are we going to be resilient? Or we're going to be gritty and start developing an even better version of ourselves, step by step, day by day, and stick with it. I love it, man. Um, I just want to end on one thing. Any anybody that has extra questions, make sure you send them to me or send them directly at Dusty on Instagram. Um, but I love this idea of, you know, it gets hard and you decide to lean into the things that you know you should have been doing or you need to do, right? And you understand that patience is vital in this game of being you know, a volleyball athlete, but also trying to make career decisions because you're so passionate about the sport, you wanna take it as far as you can, you wanna do all of these other things, you have these goals. Can you just highlight your takeaways from the decision-making process of A, of course, you have the story of your background of saying, okay, this is what happened. And most people, and I've been there too, things get difficult and you go, I don't have time to build. I don't have time to build this. Yeah. And that's why like, for me in the latter part of my career, it became, this is ridiculous. I'm over it. You get to this point where you just go like, I keep trying to be stubborn and doing this my way. 
and my way is wrong. And all these other people, great advisors have told me these things are their examples and I haven't listened to them. The other part is, and what I really believe in is that the age, our agency tries really to fit players what's to what their goals are, but what they're ready for to say, here's a systematic approach to be where you want to be. And something I see from the yeah. Europeans, but I don't see from Americans as much is that they will go for those jobs. And it's starting to change with this new era generation of players and the egos and blah, blah, blah. And social media is playing a big part of that. So be aware of that. Everybody out there is that playing a part of my decisions. But players over here generally will say, I will take the thing that builds me up more. Like that's not super hard uh, in the aspects of like, I have a controlled environment where I'm just going to work hard and it's a great environment and I just got to be patient, but I have great players or good players around me, good coaches or great coaches. How would you advise players to A, get their mind right and start acting on the things they should do, be purposeful, have intent, have a plan, and then decide on contracts for the rest or to build their career, let's just say. We'll end on that note. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're so obsessed with the shiny toy. I think uh, when I advise agent or players, I, the most important thing is you got to play. You got to play. Put yourself in a situation where you got to play. Put yourself in a situation where there's going to be, um, I think, in a weird way, you got to have guaranteed money because if that that breeds, I think, the most resentment. So be in a situation where where you can thrive and where maybe you'll have someone to help you with discomfort. Um, and I think you just have to dig into the process. You know, you always believe it's just going to be like that and like everything's perfect. And that's just not how it is. And so uh, a big thing for me is thinking about contracts. One, can I play? And two, uh, making sure we don't get too dark, whether it's like having someone else on the team that you know you can go to it's a situation where you can step outside of volleyball and have something else or if you want to have the stoic challenge just go as hard as possible and know that you have the meditation journaling practice to go back to and then um the first question i forgot what it was again this is more about the how do you make that decision to just get things in order right to have uh yeah 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 people will be like oh i don't have time i don't have time i don't have time. i mean it's like such bullshit i mean i don't like to curse a lot but even for someone like me i'm very intentional i i can be more intentional you know it's like but sometimes i'm on reddit sometimes I'm on instagram sometimes I'm on youtube where you can always be more intentional i think we can use google calendar if you really want to be so intentional you can block off times and do it but I mean, there's always things you can sacrifice, you know, you don't have to be a hundred percent like I'm dialed in, make time for friends, make time for families, but to say that you don't have time, it's just, it's not true. So, and then again, it goes back to your priorities. If you like really want to be like, I want to be the best player. Like I want to be the best version of myself. I want to play in this league. I want to play in that league. It's like, okay, your actions at a certain point have to align with that. And there's always more you can do. There's always more you can do. You can always be more mindful. You can always get more intentional reps. We always watch more video. It's just depends. Are you going to align your actions with that version that you say you can be, that you say you want to be? So that's my thought. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm going to head out because uh, I'm with Thanks, my brother. girlfriend that I haven't seen for three months and I need to be present with her. But you guys can always write me on Instagram. Uh, I always respond. Um, I know sometimes these spaces aren't the best for introverts and that's cool too. And so if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer or you're curious about, or I think would help your journey, uh, write me there and I'm, I'm happy to answer. And hopefully we can do something like this soon. Maybe even next year on there in person. Let's, let's see. I hope so brother. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks ladies. All right. Thank you guys. Thank Peace. you so much. Bye. Bye.